warmest welcomes and open arms to the Christ Jesus College and Seminary in the Christ Jesus Chapel. And today's episode of our podcast, our YouTube Live, Seven Signs. Now, this is why the world is saying that Jesus is coming any day now. He's coming back soon. We're witnessing a major revival. It's being reported that there's a major revival in Ashbury. Astronomers and scientists have notified every country in the world that a major block of the sun has separated itself and has literally flown out into outer space. That great famous statue of Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, in Rio de Janeiro was struck by lightning for the very first time. And dramatic seismic earthquakes in Turkey and Syria and surrounding areas literally took 35,000 souls and more overnight. We are witnessing bizarre spottings of unidentified objects around the world. Some people say they know what they are, and a lot of it is conjecture. I still really don't know about this tremendous explosion in East Palestine, Ohio, and this train derailment. A lot more information needs to be released for us to truly understand what actually happened there. And if you haven't been watching the news, seeing the tensions in Taiwan and Ukraine and literally all over the world, the world is at the very brink of World War III. But these are not the only reasons why I can say with certainty that Christ Jesus is, is he's, Jesus Christ is going to return any time, any day soon. Now, before you get angry with me, and before you misunderstand, I, I want you to stay tuned to the end. This is going to be a very brief message, but I want you to stay to the end so you can hear the secret of why I'm saying this. So I want you to stick around, because there's going to be a very unique secret in the Bible that you probably never heard before. It's really going to change and blow your mind. Now, here are the seven signs of the second coming of Christ. Matthew 24, verse 4. For false Christs and false prophets will rise. Take note of that. False Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, even possible, the elect. Matthew 24, 24. There have always been false teachers. There have always been false prophets, but they are now propagating. They are now appearing all over the world, especially here in America. They are, they are presenting themselves. They are fulfilling and manifesting this prophecy. And I'm here to warn you that they will increase more and more. They're going to show signs that they have the gift of healing. They're going to show that they have signs that they can even control nature. Now, I can tell you right now, just looking at the world of politics, the world of economics, everyone is trying to be a Jesus. Everyone is trying to be a messianic savior. Everybody wants the throne of Jesus. And everyone's trying to prove that they have the power to save the world. The second sign Matthew 24, 6, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Now you may say to me, come on, Ramsey, don't you know your history? For the past 2,000 years, there's been plenty of wars. I want you to stick around to the end, because you're going to hear a secret that is hidden in the Bible, that Jesus Christ is days away. You see, Yes, there's always have been wars, but now the intensity, the Bible says that you will see the birth pains. You see, 
when it, when a woman has a baby, there's a contraction, and then she doesn't have that contraction for a while, and then it increases in frequency, increases in intensity, and that's exactly what the world is experiencing right now. And true believers can see it, but the world is not watching it. They're not understanding what's going on. That the frequency and the intensity of the birth pains are intensi are intensifying. Now, I'm here to say to you, the Bible is very clear about this. As these birth pains increase in frequency and intensity, there will be no peace. There will be no international peace. There will be no national peace. These things must come to pass before the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's the third sign. Matthew 24, 7. There's going to be a dramatic increase in natural disasters. Are you watching the news? Are you really understanding what's really going around the world and here in America? At this very moment, there are 30 million people who are dying from hunger. Didn't you see that earthquake? That dramatic earthquake in, in Syria and, and, and also in Turkey? This is here to remind us what the Bible is saying. And I don't need to remind you of this worldwide event that just occurred in 2020. And if it hasn't, if, if you're not awake, you know, people talking about the, the, the awake culture. If you're not awake from what happened with this worldwide event that commenced around the beginning of 2020, that's a warning sign. And you need to take it very seriously. You don't need to be a genius to understand the great and deep crisis the world is in. And this incredible gross deception that is ever increasing in the world today. The Bible says that when people see the judgment of God coming, their hearts are going to fail. When they see the world crumbling around about them, their hearts are going to fail. And you see that now today, people's hearts are failing. They're filled with fear. They're filled with doubt. They're filled with anxiety. They're filled with the unknown. Now I'm going to, I'm going to say something else here that's very blunt. And you'll always get that here on this channel. I love the earth. I love the sea. I love all animals. As a physician, as a healer, I'll do everything I can to promote life, but there's nothing that we can do to save the earth. Mankind is spending billions and trillions of dollars to save the earth, but my friends, you cannot save the earth. The Bible is extremely clear that the earth will melt away and that God has promised us a new earth and a new heaven. The fourth sign. Now, the Spirit says expressly that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to politics? No. Giving heed to economics? No. Giving heed to philosophies and education and knowledge? No. Giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons? We need to wake up and understand what's going on in the world today. It's found in 1 Timothy 4.1. Now, 10 years ago, if, if someone told you that they were deconstructing their faith, you wouldn't understand what they're talking about. But it's happening today. You have famous actors, famous celebrities, famous athletes who are coming in boldly, brassly, brazenly in front of TV and saying, I have just now gone through a deconstruction of my faith. What are you talking about? You see, mankind is mocking God. Mankind is spitting in God's face. They're scoffing at God. They're ridiculing and saying, the Bible is not true. And we see that wicked imaginations are ever increasing. Wicked new ideas are ever propagating. The question really is, 
The question really is, how long will a holy God be patient? How long will Father God, the holy triune God, be patient? Prophecy says that God is going to send a strong delusion to the world. The question I'm going to ask you is, what do you think that delusion is going to be? The Bible says that there's going to be a great falling away. Not a small falling away, a great falling away. And as a pastor, I see churches closing. I'm seeing church attendance decreasing. I'm seeing pastors resigning. But I'm going to share with you the real reason why I believe that Jesus is coming very soon. He's, his return, his imminent return is just days away. I'm going to show that to you in a moment's time. The fifth sign. Matthew 24, 14. The gospel will be preached in the whole world. The gospel must be preached to the whole world before Jesus returns. And we have underestimated the number of people who have never heard about Jesus, who have never heard the good news. There's a missionary group called Radical. And they made a worldwide survey that took many, many years. And their numbers are this. There are about 3 billion people in the world that have never heard the gospel clearly in over 7,000 people groups. So the church has so much to do. That's what the Christ Jesus College is all about. The Christ Jesus Chapel is all about. That we're going to send people to these countries and send people to these. We're going to send people with the good news wherever they are. Now, you may say to me, well, really? There are places in the world that never heard about Jesus? Yes. I can, I can tell you right now that I speak to people on a daily basis, and they don't know the name of Jesus. They don't understand the God. They've never heard the gospel. Now, you may say, well, I've heard about Jesus, but I don't know too much about Jesus. I don't know the gospel. I don't know about Jesus. Let me break it down for you. It's very simple. You may be good looking. You may have a nice house. Maybe educated. You may look good on the outside. But when God looks at you, you're a sinner. We lean toward wickedness. We lean toward sin. We lean into the bad and, and not what's good. Because we were born that way. And that sin has a cost. And God hates sin, but he loves us. And he loved us so much, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to come down on earth and show us how to lead a perfect, righteous life. He wasn't taken to the cross. He went to the cross. Jesus went to the cross to pay for your sins and for my sins. And God punished him on that cross. And God transferred our sins unto Jesus. And when Jesus died, he said, it is finished. And Satan was defeated and our sins were paid for. And he was buried. And on the third day, Jesus has done what no other man, Buddha never did it, Muhammad never did it, and nobody ever in the history of the world has ever did it. Jesus conquered death. And Jesus has promised us eternal life. If we make him Lord of our life and we confess that God has raised him from the dead. So my question for you this morning is, what are you going to do with that good news? What are you going to do with that good news? Jesus has promised that he's going to return soon. And Jesus is a man of his word. Listen carefully. Listen to this prophecy in Zechariah 14.4. Open your eyes. And in that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount shall be split in two. My friend, that day is coming. Jesus is going to come down from heaven, and his feet are going to land on the Mount of Olives, and the mountains are going to split in half. And my friends, the world is going to be split in half. Jesus is going to split the world in two. 
which side will you be on? Will you will you be on the side of Jesus? Will you be on the side against Jesus? Now, the first time Jesus came, he came as a lamb. He came as the lamb of God who take away the sins of the world. But the second time he comes, he's going to come as a ferocious lion. He's going to come as the judge because God has given him all the power, the authority, and the dominion, and the power to judge. He will not be the same. Let me give you the sixth sign. There's coming someone who's called the abomination of desolation. Keep your eyes open because he is the unknown. He's the dark horse. And this is a man of the world. He's going to be handpicked and groomed by Satan. And he'll make himself God. He will make himself God. And he's going to literally... With the use of technology and artificial intelligence and all the gizmos in the world, he's going to force mankind to worship him. Hear me very clearly. You heard it on this channel. So allow me right now, because you stay tuned, I'm going to share with you the secret why I believe that the coming of Jesus is just days away. Now, before I do that, let me read Mark 13. Mark 13, 32. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. See, only the Father knows when Jesus is going to return. But you may say, but come on, Ramsey, you just told me you know when Jesus is coming. Well, I'm going to tell you that only God the Father knows the precise day and hour and minute of the return of Jesus. But let me tell you the secret. You've tuned in, you've done well, and here's the secret. Remember back in the in the Garden of Eden? Remember back in Genesis? Remember your Sunday school days? Listen to this secret. Listen carefully. This is God's warning. Genesis 2, 17. Here's the secret. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day, in the day that you shall surely eat, you shall die. That's interesting. That's extremely interesting. Why? Adam, Adam ate the fruit. He didn't die in a day. In fact, Adam lived to 930 years. Something must be wrong with Genesis 2.17. God said he would die in a day. Hmm. So here it comes. 2 Peter 3.8 But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years. I'm sorry. One day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. Did you get it? Adam lived for 930 years on man's clock. But in God's eyes, Adam died in one day. So people are laughing. Jesus is not coming back. The gospel is not true. I can do whatever I want to do. And the Bible is just a man-made book. Let me tell you something. As far as God is concerned, Jesus has only been gone for two days. And we need to prepare for the return of Jesus Christ because he's going to come like a thief in the night. And my question to you is, are you prepared? You should be prepared. And as Christians, we should be preparing. God is giving all of us a second chance. Right now, the door is open for everyone. The door is open for everyone to come into God's family. But one day, in a moment's notice, that door is going to be slammed shut like, the do like that door in, in Noah's Ark. It's going to be slammed shut. And then you're going to find out for yourself. You're going to find out for yourself what eternity means. You're going to understand that one day 
in a lost eternity is a thousand years. I pray that you're not on the wrong side of eternity. I pray that you take this good news that Jesus loves you, that God loves you, that the price has been paid, that you don't have to pay this price. Jesus Christ is Lord and that God has raised him from the dead. Come on, Rams. You said there were seven signs. What is the seventh sign? I want to personally invite you. I want to personally invite you to tomorrow to see and understand what is the seventh sign that proves biblically why Jesus is coming in days to come. Because Jesus wants you to know the truth. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. But no man comes to me. No, he said, no man comes to the Father. He said, that's what Judaism is missing. That's what, that, that's what our, our Muslim friends are missing, our Buddhist friends are missing. You cannot come to God unless you come through Jesus. And I'm going to show, to, I'm going to show tomorrow and just highlight the seventh sign, and I'm personally inviting you and your friends and family to tune in tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. I love you, but he loves us the most. Thank you so much for joining, and again, for all of you, thank you for your prayers and encouragement. And by God's grace, we'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you.